Charles Dickens. Now this is most significant video we are going to do on Charles Dickens and Bleak House. Please don't miss it. Everything about Bleak House, all the critical aspects, theme, motif, symbols, everything about Bleak House we are going to discuss in this video. So please don't miss it. Share it, wrestle it again and again and watch it. Charles Dickens biography, Charles Dickens, February 7, 1812, June uh, 9 to 1870, was the second of eight children born to Elizabeth and John Dickens. Improvident and Improvident and irresponsible parents who without deepest regrets it seems, gave their offspring poor start in the world without actually hitting uh, his parents. Without actually hitting his parents, Dickens early saw them for what they were. He was particularly critical of his mother, a self-centered woman, short on affection for Charles. For example, she wanted to prolong his stay at the shoe blackening house, uh, warehouse where he had uh, been sent at the age of 12 to help uh, to help support the family. In later life, Charles' own generosity and sense of decency prompted uh, him to assist his parents who continued in their uh, improvident ways. Charles Dickens, February 7, uh, 1812 to uh, this, uh, nine, June 9, 1870 was the second of eight children born to Elizabeth and John Dickens. Improvident and irresponsible parents who, without deepest regret, seems gave their offspring poor start in the world, without actually hating his parents. Uh, Dickens early saw them uh, for what they were. He was particularly critical of his mother, a self-centered woman, uh, short on a uh, short on affection for Charles. For example, she wanted to prolong his stay at the shoe blackening warehouse, where he had seen sent at the age of 12 to help support the family. In later life, Charles' own generosity and sense of decency prompted him to assist his parents who continued in their improvident ways, particularly from natural inclination that partly by the way of taking refuge from an irregular and pr problematic family life, the young boy immersed himself in the world of imagination. He read Shakespeare, Edison, Fielding, Goldsmith and several other authors avidly. He was also fond of reciting, acting and theatre going activities in which his father encouraged him. He also wandered happily along the themes and themes and through the uh, towns and nearby countryside of Kent, Engl uh, England's warmest and most uh, serene re region. Where Dickens, uh, where Dickens is recited from 1817 to 1822. Dickens' affection for uh, Catham, Rochester and other town in Kent uh, ripens over the years and his final novel, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, uh, left unfinished, is set in Rochester and contains some of the author's most vivid and evocating writing. Both his uh, reading and his uh, recital, recital as well as his acting serve to educate Dickens for what would later become his career as a writer with a flair of the dramatic speech and dramatic incidents. As most of his early readings was the work of 18th century writers, it is not surprising that the values and attitudes expressed by characters and authors like in his own novels are essentially the same as those found in Fielding, Goldsmith and Richardson. Uh, those writers believed that human nature was essentially good and that, that this goodness was actually enhanced by the spontaneous and enthusiastic public expression of that very belief. One day, as Charles and his father were walking, just outside Rochester, his father pointed out the local mansion, Gats Hill Place, and suggested that if the boy made the most of his talent, uh, most of his talent, talents, he might, somebody, he might someday be able to live in such a house. This is a classic example of a small seemingly inconsequential moment of later proves to be highly significant. God gets his place become the ideal for the boy and one 
that helped him associate a talent with financial success. In 1856, when Dickens saw was 44, he was able to buy the house. He loved it and never moved again. In 1822, John Dickens, then a senior clerk in the Navy Pay Office, was transferred from Ketham to London. There, continuing to spend more than he earned, he soon became hopelessly insolvent. In 1824, Charles was taken out of school and sent to work, pass, uh, pasting labels on the a post of shoe blackening. Two weeks later, John Dickens was jailed at Marshalsea. I would request you to remember this name of the jail, Marshalsea. Marshalsea. This is a jail, it is known as debtor's jail. Marshalsea. And that's what the reference we get in a bleak house also, Marshalsea. A debtor's prison. The humiliation and despair of 1824 left a permanent emotional scar. However, what English literature was to gain from his experience when Dickens became a writer was an unprecedentedly vivid and varied presentation of childhood as vulnerability. In fact, Dickens must be credited as the first serious English novelist to deal extensively with the victimized child, uh, the theme that has continued to produce masterpieces in fiction and films. So this is what we see there. A personal life's impact in the writing and that these experiences we are able to see easily in Bleak House. Bleak House centered around children and the very young people at the same time around the law and its codes. Dickens went directly. This paragraph is very significant. Please listen it again and again. So Bleak House centers around children and very young people at the same time around the law and its code. Dickens went directly from childhood into the world of law. In 1827, he obtained employment as an office boy for Charles Molloy, a London solicitor. Several weeks later, he was hired as a clerk for the law office of Elise and Blackmore. Dissatisfied with these dull and low-paid jobs, he learned Shorten, and late in 1828, he became a shortened writer of doctors a common another institution of the law intermittently he was uh, he also did law reporting for the metropolitan police court in his spare time he read widely and happily at the british museum this paragraph is significant please listen and watch it and read it carefully in 1829 dickens fell in love with maria a bad man an attractive and vivacious but rather snobbish and hard-hearted banker's daughter. To uh, better his chance with her, he began looking for a better paying and more prestigious position. In 1832, he went strongly into journalism, became a parliamentary reporter for a mirror of parliament and general report, reporter for the true son. Maria Bandel found Dickens somewhat interesting but never took him seriously as a suitor. After four years, Dickens gave up on her uh, but he lost what a crushing and long enduring sorrow. Dickens' best biographer, uh, Edgar Johnson. Please remember this name, Edgar Johnson. Dickens' best biographer, Edgar Johnson. You quote this person very often and please uh, read about him, Edgar Johnson. If I get a time, I'll just make another video on this. Edgar Johnson, Dickens' best biographer, Edgar Johnson, says that, all the imagination, romance, passion and inspiration of his time, she had brought him to flower and she would never be separated from, knowing that his failure to win Maria was largely due to his low social standing and poor financial prospect. Dickens became more determined than ever to make the name of himself and a fortune to go with it. Pros pros prospects brightened almost at once. He had been writing some sketches of London life and several of these were accepted and published by monthly magazine and evening chronicles. In March 1834, Dickens landed a job as a reporter of, for the important big liberal newspaper. The Morning Chronicle Journalism kept him in practice with the writing, uh, with the written word, and forced him to observe closely and uh, report accurately. It was excellent training for a man who saw more and more closely that he wanted to make his work, his mark in literature. Early 1836, Dickens collected pieces. Dickens collected pieces were published as sketches of bores. The book was very favorable reviewed, favorably reviewed, sold well, and went through. Uh, three editions by 1837. A month after the appearance of this book, Dickens published the initial part of his first novel, the posthumous paper of the 
Pickwick Club. Immensely successful, Pickwick established Dickens at one the most popular writer in England. He's, uh, he left the Morning Chronicles and became editor of Bent Bentley's Miscellany, a magazine in which Oliver Twist was published in installment. Uh, so remember this fact about Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist Bentley's Miscell Miscellany a magazine in which Oliver Twist was published in installment um, beginning in February 1837. On April, uh, on April 2,100, uh, two, 2, 1836, Dickens married Catherine Hogarth. On April 2 and 1836, uh, Dickens marries Catherine Hogarth. Although the marriage produced 10 children, it was never a love match and Kate never came close to meeting Dickens' idol of romantic affinity. In Victorian England, divorce was difficult, scandalous and often social and financially ruinous. Eventually, however, Dickens did effect a perm permanent separation from Catherine. Quite early in the marriage, Dickens realized that it was Catherine's sister Mary who embodied his idol. So perfect a creature never breathed. He had married a uh, lived it is virtually certain that Dickens would have become romantically involved with her. Her sudden death, apparently of unsuspected heart disease, at uh, 17 was the greatest loss that Dickens ever experienced. He made plans to be buried beside her and insisted that his first daughter be named Mary. Undoubtedly, the loss of Mary Hogarth further strengthened Dickens' inclination to center much of his story material around the pathos of children and young adults who were caught up in emotional and physical uh, sufferings. Mary is the prototype of many of the young heroines of Dickens' novel. She is immemorably immo, immo, uh, memorably portrayed as uh, Lois Buxter in the British film Dickens of London, for which Wolf Mankiewicz wrote the screenplay. So remember this fact. She is immemorably portrayed by Lois Bax Baxter in the British film Dickens of London. And I request you if you would see this film, Dickens of London. Oliver Twist was followed in 1839 by Nicholas Nickleby. Thus, Dickens' third novel illustrated the continuing influence of theatre on Dickens' approach to fiction. Individual scenes, usual, usually of only uh, mirror importance, seem, seem intended more for the stage than for the page and uh, are so vivid and energetic that they often steal the show. This erupting the unity of the book, many of his other novels show the same tendency and in fact Dickens created a stage a, a version of several of his books and stories. This is usually quite popular and financially successful as well as remaining and in we treated the uh, goal. Dickens continued all his life to stage private theatrical usually as gets in place for, fam for family and friends, a social art Theatre appealed to uh, eminently social uh, so sociable Dickens. A lover of energy, Dickens also found the vivacity and dynamic projection of the stage irres irresistible. Closely allied to his fondness for theatre was his practice of giving high dramatic reading uh, from his work. These two were almost very invariably well attended and highly in, uh, remunerative. They begin in 1853 and from 1850, it became very frequent. Unfortunately, they took a lot out of author and uh, he sometimes collapsed during and after a reading and contributed to his permanent uh, premature aging. His fourth novel, The Old Curiosity Shop, 1841, was one of the most popular that Dickens uh, ever penned. It, uh, sales were spec its sales were spectacular and it reaches a worldwide audience. The story heroine, Little Nan, has long remained the archetype of the Angelique Angeli Kelly, pure and self-sacrificing, but also game and intrepid child. Mary Hogarth was Dickens' major inspiration. Dickens perfectly illustrated illustrates the phenomenal energy and personal productivity seen in so many figures in the Victorian era. This novelist, playwright, theater, uh, habit to socialize, socializer, Charity benefit worker, lecturer, father of 10, and voluminous letter writer was also the editor of several magazines. In 1841 onward, he had to meet deadlines, scout out talent, dream up projects, and prompt sales. 
first for masters hum master hum phrase clock then household words and finally all the year round these pe periodicals printed his own sketches and short stories and serialized several of his novels fairly early in his career 1842 dickens went on a reading tour of united states then undertook another in 1866 both were very successful but neither had any particular influence on his work or ideas possibly because he found american life to be on the whole vulgar and shallow he re recorded his first impression in the highly uh, readable american notes 1842 dickens was a socially conscious a whig but could not be called a political activist he was genuinely sympathetic to the working class and highly critical of both the idyll among the nobility and a newly rich class that was created by industrialization for the most part however his efforts on behalf of social reform were limited to charitable donations and benefit readings and to the social message implied in work of fiction whose primary aim was to provide pleasure for the imagination in his later years dickens became less optimistic but social improvement and dropped his criticism for the aristocracy in 1865 1866 he defeated from the uh, liberals and supported a conservative cause backed by tennyson fried and carlyle even in his early years he was devoted to queen victoria and to british institutions and customs in general he was an opponent of revolution and even of the right of the workers to strike in 1857 dickens made and became strongly attracted to uh, ellen lawless turner turner a young actress in 1858 he separated from catherine and took uh, ellen as his mistress the two were dis uh, discreet and Uh, as possible and never lived together but met frequently dickens never regretted the break with catherine or the choice of ellen returning to london from a brief vacation in france the two were survivors of the wreck of their train at stepley hurst on june 9 1865 dickens was able to help several of his injured injured passengers but the incident drained some of his own strength perhaps permanently and haunted him with nightmares for some time he died 5 years to the day after the wreck the crash inspired one of his best pieces of short fiction the signal man the only novel completed after the a step play hurts accident was long and involved but impression impressive over uh, over our mutual friend in rapidly deteriorating health in 1870 dickens worked intensely on the mastery of uh, and were edwin drood but collapsed on june 8 leaving the work half finished he died the following days dickens own favorite novel was his autobiographical david copperfield 1850 it has remained one of the posterity favorites in addition to david copperfield the novels that have stood up best under the scrutiny of the years and pickwick papers and several of the later books bleak house 1853 hard times 1854 a tale of two cities 1859 Great Expectation, 1861, and Our Mutual Friend, 1865. Of Dickens' short fiction, The Signal Man, 1866, The Cricket on the ha Heart, 1845, and Christmas Carol, 1843, have remained the best work. Now <coughs> we are going to study the characters of Bleak House, and these are the list of the characters. A uh, Mr. Bayham Badger, a London physician who provided training for Richard. Carson Mrs Bayham Badger his wife so constantly talk about her three husbands Matthew Badger the owner of the music shop a former soldier who has kept up a friendship with George Rouncewell Mrs Badger Matthew sensible wholesome good natured wife Malta Cubic and Wood and Woolwich Badger the Badgers happy children Miss Barbary Lady Dedlock sister who raised Easter Summerson for a time and who has once by thrones beloved so miss barbary is a very significant character in this uh, novel because she is raising the child and she is the only person who told lady dedlock that your child is still born so uh, that is why remember miss barbary miss barbary is the person who made uh, easter's personality which is so weak mimic and subdued <coughs> she is a strong and a dominating woman and she ruined the personality of is a samasa and uh, she's the person who uh, she's a villain actually she's the person who caused all the pain and suffering in life of uh, easter so miss barbary okay you can remember is 
you know, Barbaros or uh, I mean, Barbarian. So, Miss Barbary. A uh, Lawrence Bython, the passionate, boisterous, but good hearted friend of Mr. John Dice, modeled on the poet Walter Savage London and friend of Dickens. Inspector Bucket, a shrewd, relentless, but amiable and thoughtful detective. Miss Bucket, the detective, Mrs. Bucket, the, Mrs. Bucket, the detective's keen, wit, witted, and helpful wife. William Buffy, MP, a political friend of Sir Leicester Dadlow. Richard Carlson, a cousin of Ada Clare, a relentless in decisive ward of Mr. John Dice. The Reverend Mr. Cat Chadman, a pompous, insincere preacher, the incarnation of religiosity. You remember this, Mr. Reverend? This is the incarnation of religiosity. Then Mrs. Chadman, formerly uh, Mrs. R uh, R Mrs. Rachel, who knew Easter Summerson as a child. The Lord High Chancellor, presiding office of the Chancery Court. Ada Clare, a ward of Mr. John Dice and a close friend of Easter Summerson. Like Easter, she is an ideally virtuous young woman. And you know, here, when we talk about ideally virtuous women, this is a typical concept of Victorian womanhood, you know, Victorian femininity. So she has to be meek, she has to be subdued, and she has to be a beautiful angel, an angel of the house who is all those suffering, pain, frustrated, but they never show it to the uh, people and uh, it's all tolerated inside. So that's what this, this uh, I mean, you know, quote and quote, you please remember. So Lady Honoria Dedlock, the charming, self-controlled wife of Sir Leicester and mother of Easter Summerson, the tragic protagonist of this novel. Sir Leicester Dedlock, a proud, honorable aristocrat with an estate, Chesney Bold in Lincolnshire. Volumnia Dadlock, a somewhat giddy, elderly cousin of Sir Leicester and frequent guest at Chesney Bold. Miss Donny, twin who uh, run Greenleaf, the boarding school where Issa Summerson spent some of her early years before going to Blake House. So, Mrs. Donny, twins who run Greenleaf, because Greenleaf is a school which is where Easter is residing as a boarding student. Miss Flight, a well meaning intellectual old woman driven. Uh, half made by the John Dias and John Dias. Uh, Mrs. Griddle, now just remember, while in between, I think it is very significant for me to remember the page number. Or we are here on the character. So then, uh, Mr. Uh, okay, Leicester Dadlock, Volumnia Dadlock, Miss Donny, then Miss Flight, a well meaning intellectual old woman driven half made by John Dias and John Dias. So, uh, Mr. Gridley, the man from Shropshire, a man's befriend by George Rouncewell and eventually driven to suicide by the frustration of John Dice and John Dice. So these are the outcomes of, you know, the suicide of Mr. Gridley and the life which is ruined of uh, uh, this, um, this boy who is a boyfriend of... of uh, what is that? Edda Clare. Richard Richardson. So these are the outcomes of the long court cases which are going on. Then William Guppy, a law clerk who twice proposed to Ether, Ether Summerson. Guster, a mid-servant of the Snagsby, she often has fits. Captain Howdown Nemo, a former army officer at the time of the story and impoverished law writer, copyright, he's a Ether Summerson's father. Miss Med, Med Mary Moss, Mary Moisel, Horsten, Horten, a hot tempered and vengeful French maid dismissed by Lady Dedlock. Eventually, she murdered Tuckinghorn. John Dice, the benevolent owner of Bleak House and legal guardian of Easter Summerson, Richard Carson, and Ada Clare. Tom Jones, John Dice's cousin, made suicide, thereby the frustration of the John Dice and John Dice. Mrs. Jellyby, a woman obsessed with social activism and neglectful of her own family. Mr. Jellyby, the long-suffering, mild-mannered husband of the neglectful Mrs. Jellyby. Caddy, Carl, Caroline Jellyby, Mrs. Jellyby's eldest daughter. She becomes a close friend of Easter and marries Fritz Tarvedro. Pippi Jellyby, the sadly neglected youngest son of Jellyby. Jenny, the wife of brickmaker St. Alban. So, Joe, uh, Tog, Togge, a street crossing sweep in the Holborn district where the Chancery Court is located. Uh, Jobling Tony Will, the law writer friend of William Guppy. Mr. Ke Mr. Kenge, a senior partner in the legal firm of Kenge and Carboy. 
carboy. Mr. Crook, a grotesque old man who owns a rag and bottle shop and sends a room to Captain Howdown. Liz, a, break, a brickmaker's wife and friend of Jenny. Mercury, a footman in the household of Sir Leicester Dadlow. Naked Coviness, a shift chief officer who arrest Harold Skimpole, Carlele, Charlotte, Nicket, Nicket's daughter who often is dead become Easter's maid at Bleak House, Mrs. Prodigal, a busybody social worker who rules despotically over her six sons, Rosa, Lady Deadlock's maid, she marries what Rouncewell, Mr. Rouncewell, uh, one of her sons and Iron Master, George Rouncewell, Mr. George Rouncewell, other son, owner of the London Shooting Gallery. White Rouncewell, Mrs. Rouncewell, grandson, betrothed to Rosa. Harold Skimpole, a socially cheerful but irresponsible and parasitic man who is protect, protected by him but eventually repudiated by John Chandas. The grandfather Smallweed, a man, a mean, greedy, old, invalid, who personified ruthless opportunism. Grandmother Smallweed, the opportunist, childish wife. But Tholmeo Smallweed, the Smallweed grants, and Judy Smallweed, Smallweed grants. These are all small characters. You can please read out them. You just read out them. These are small characters. Okay, and we are moving. Alan Woodcard, uh, Alan Woodcard is a noble-hearted young doctor who married Issa Summers. This is what's significant because he's ultimately married to uh, Mrs. Woodcard, Alan's elder mother, somewhat of an interfering old biddy. So this is six significant. Now let's come to the critical aspect as characterization in Bleak House. Critical aspects as characterization in Bleak House. Like Shakespeare, another imaginatively fertile and vivacious writer, Dickens created dozens of characters who continue to delight readers today. His ability to invent such living character was aided by his experience as a newspaper reporter. The job forced him to observe people's look, words, and manner very closely and then record these observations accurately. Like Shakespeare, another imaginatively fertile and vivacious writer, Dickens created dozens of characters who continue to delight readers today. His ability to invent such living character was aided by his experience as a newspaper reporter. The job forced him to observe people's look, words and manners very closely and then record these observations accurately. Of course, of course, of course, the disposition was already there. Even in childhood, Dickens was fascinated with the image and the eternal feature of the things and people, and his talent of creating comic and grotesque characters manifested itself quite early. Aside from the generous amount of adventure in most of his novels, what draws readers to them year after year, through all the changes of fad and fashion, is the vitality of the characters and the fun and drama they give rise in the dynamic episodes worth nothing. Is the fact that character and fiction do not actually have to be like lifelike in the sense of being complex and highly individualized in order to be successful and memorable. Talking animals aren't at all lifelike, yet more than a few have achieved status as compelling character. The fool in King Lear has relatively few lines. Some of them rather obscure, yet few minor characters have become more memorable. Claggard, the villain in the Billy Bud, is barely characterized at all, but the haunts us. What well, added character to the permanent report there of our mind is not de 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 uh, dependent on realism or even on complete credibility, but solely as the magic vitality that author is able to endure from the depth and reaches of the spontaneous creativity. Dickens possesses both the vitality and the skill uh, to find the words that conveyed it. Dickens is very much a satirist and a comic entertainer and very little as a depth hunting psychologist with Le, le, but literally talent. 20th century psychological novelist, for example, Virginia Woolf. Remember, 20th century psychological novelist, for example, Virginia Woolf, James Joyce, and Mary uh, Sinclair goes 
uh, go immutely into the details of their characters' inner lives, inwardness in its wide range of sensation, formed and half-formed thoughts and feelings, uh, transit images and quickly changing shades of mood is often in all its characters. Uh, of concreteness or particularity. This is a sort of realism, psychological realism, and its writers give us the sense that they are trying not only to be real, to tell it like without, without tidying or censoring, but also complete as if they were scientists or a clinician attempting to construct a complete as well as thoroughly accurate report. Such is method, despite its validity and success, it has produced a vast body of work. Some of its highly successful tends to have certain limitations to which enthusiasts often seem oddly or oddly unaware. A reader may learn an immense amount of information that about what goes deeply with character X and still not gain any distinct and satisfying impression of character X as a person who might be encountered next door or at the grocery. Ultimately, each of us is a whole, a personality, and each of us is project that organic wholeness, a personality which is perceived by those around us, around us, and experience as distinct and unique. Because we are what we are, each of us carries a certain aura, creates a certain uh, um, uh, certain presence and impression. This is whole life. This is. This is the visible self, social self and one that is seen by other and interact with them. Characterization through free association, stream of consciousness or reverse uh, rev, rev, uh, revere easily neglected this important image, reality and social reality of us. In all the things we do as social beings, that is as onlookers and participants from the working and uh, talking to simply observe. Observing, remember observing, observing. Okay, I left it here. Observing, okay. So, observing, observing each other in passing, what we experience in presence, impression, having unity and uniqueness and immediacy. Hence, in the context of interacting visuals, Dickens, external or impress, impressionating method of characterization is in a sense uh, actually more realistic, more true to what we experience in real life than. Seemingly more complete and scientific method of beginning from deep inside and saying that in any event it was imagined at the impression and distinct presence of the dramatic or, graf or graphic feature and main manner and at the same time uh, delighting in a variety of human personality intent to pack his book and greatly vary varying characters. The sheer number of his characters would itself prevent him from drawing much upon this space consuming method of characterization through deep inwardness. It has to be said that this achievement is creating a very large member of number of living characters by no means suffering in comparison with the work of stream of consciousness and other deeply psychological author. Main characters principle have to be made interesting if only because they are around so much of the time. Uh, they are also tied to the book seriously theme serious theme so we have to be able to take such important characters seriously they are they dare not to be trivial monotonously simple and unchanging or unreal for most readers neither john dies or not easter summerson is completely real they are characterized in such a way that they have dignity and seriousness and they play a crucial part in the working out of dickens important theme therefore they invite comparison and individual like those found in real life but when we make a uh, that comparison we do so spontaneously unconsciously and we discover that both characters seem good be true uh, unreal lady deadlocks for that dead, deadlock fortunately is not marred by such pris, pris, uh, pristine purity she is much more interesting character and illustrates dickens method when he creates serious characters major or minor in whom we become interested the successful formula is to keep the characters human Keep perfection away, but make them good enough and likable enough to be pers personable. Such characters tend to in in ingratiate themselves with us. Then, by in inventing circumstances of danger or suffering from them, 
Dickens can make sure that we may we remain character interested in their facts. Incidentally, readers 1853 seem to have found portraits of exemplary goodness, especially of benevolence and more purity, more engaging than we do today. One of Dickens' specialties is caricature, that artistic distortion by an exaggeration designed to produce amusement but not contempt or indignation. Throughout Dickens' novels, scores upon scores of the minor characters are caricatures. One of the most obvious examples in Bleak House is unnamed, deleted cousin of Sir Leicester. The fellow, man, the fellow mangles words and sentence right out of intelligibility, snags me with his mechanical cough and predictable repetitions is another, a filled squad of a uh, droll speech and odd moments is yet another. A character who is also a caricature sticks out is eminently, eminently noticeable and also usually arouses our comic sense. Thus, a caricature is exactly the kind of thing that appeals strongly to Dickens' own imagination and conspicuous, therefore, uh, arresting image and one is illicit, grand, good-natured humor. Obviously, Dickens created caricature. He did what came most naturally to him as a writer, and so it, it so isn't surprising that his caricatures are often more successful than his ordinary characters. These may triumph in caricature industries. Again, the point made above: the character's highly stylized, artistical shape and simplified may have at least much ability to capture and hold us the cat uh, the cat characters of a report real realism. Critical aspects as a theme of Bleak House. Like every sizable work of fiction, Bleak House is built around several themes, also called motive. That is, insight, concept, attitude, or simply exploring of the certain aspect. Now, remember, these are we are talking about the themes of the Bleak House, and this is, I think, would be the most significant part of for your uh, answer. Like every sizable work of fiction, Bleak House is built around several themes, also called motives, and that is insights, concepts, attitude, and simply exploration of certain aspects. Aspects of human experience, a novel built very strongly around a clearly formulated and detailed, debatable or controversial theme is sometimes called a thesis. Novels and propaganda novel is one type of you know, the, the thesis novel. Blake House has a strong and obvious theme, whose point may, in fact, be more de uh, debatable than Dickens realized. Yet the book is not a thesis novel, and at least not a clear example of one. For most, Bleak House is a romance affair of the heart of or Easter, Ada and Caddy figure very prominently and is a murder mystery as well. So, Bleak House is a romance affair of the heart for Easter, Ada and Caddy figures very prominently and is a murder mystery as well. Like every sizable work of fiction, Bleak House is built around several themes and also called motives. That is, insight, concept, attitude, and simply exploration of the certain aspects of his human nature. A novel built very strongly around a clearly formulated and debatable controversial theme is sometimes called these novels. The propaganda novel is one type of this thesis novel. Bleak House has a strong and obvious theme whose point may, in fact, be more debatable than Dickens realized. Yet the book is not a thesis novel, or at least not a clear example of one. For most, a Bleak House is a romance affair of the heart of Easter, Ada, and Caddy, figure very prominently, and is a murder mystery as well. In an artistically sound, well-constructed book. All the major and minor themes and motives should be closely related to, as this enhances the book's unity. The most obvious yet not necessarily the ultimate theme in Bleak House is that of the undeserved suffering created by High Court of Chancery, in particular, and by Venner and by Venel, self-serving lawyers like Tuckinghorn in general. An example of the minor theme, also called a side theme, is a Dickens implied criticism of people who might be well intentions but who neglect their three homes and families. In order to be very, try to be charitable to distract people about whom they know little. This novel, like many of other works of Dickens, balances themes of social criticism and motive, dealing with the truth of personal experience. E. C. Summerson, one of the principal character, is relatively little affected by the deplorable working of the Chancery Court. In the main, her story uh, centers around her initiations into life. A discovery of her own identity and the development of her emotional relationship with Lady Dedlock, John Dice, Alan Woodcard, and the other. This book happily ending, happy for Easter, Ada, Alan, Mr. John Dice, and some others is a theme in itself. The ending implies that although the evil of the world is formidable, happiness remains as a possibility. Perhaps even as likelihood, especially for those who are both pure, of far and responsible. 
responsibly preserving another impaired theme is that romance is important and not necessarily an illusion or merely a, a momentary thing dickens ultimate attack is not on chancery court the working or a misworking of the chancery do as dickens makes perfectly clear constitute a measurable dickens savagely condemns that particular institution but a large issue is involved chancery itself in fact the whole system of law so that is most significant part of the uh, novel that is the uh, chancery uh, or uh, the system of law that is what is also a symbol similarly the fog is symbol okay the fog similarly the fog is symbol of chancery and also of a uh, similar institutions and operations in other words both chancery and fog symbolize the dead hand of the past custom and tradition remember this paragraph is very significant read it again and for for you i'm again reading it dickens ultimate attack is on the chancery court the working or misworking of the chancery do as dickens makes perfectly clear constitutes a measurable dickens severely condemns that particular institution but a large issues involved chancery itself in fact the whole system of law is also a symbol similarly the fog is symbol of chancery and also of the similar institutions operations in other words both chancery and fog symbolizes the dead hand of the past the custom so dead custom dead tradition and dead law which is not helping people the dead hand of the past is uh, the dead hand of the past is a uh, is a hand that continues to kill in the present The point has never been better made by the Edgar Johnson in Charles Dickens' *His Tragedy and Triumph*. So Edgar Johnson, remember Edgar Johnson and his book *Is Charles Dickens' His Tragedy and Triumph*, 1852. He is the uh, uh, biographer of of uh, Charles Dickens, which will remain the greatest to fall biographies of Dickens. Please remember this, Ed, Edgar Johnson. his biography is considered to be the greatest of all edgar johnson remember this edgar johnson edgar johnson 1952 and the book of his charles dickens and his tragedy and triumph his tragedy and Right. Okay. Dickens, uh, both law and form are fundamentally symbol of the all ponderous and murky forces that suffocate and create energies of mankind. They figure, prefigure in darkness visible and entanglement of vested interests and in and institutions and archaic tradition protected greed. protecting greed fettering generous actions obstructing men's movement and be clouding their vision these are the significant paragraph please see them read them again listen them again these are this paragraph is very significant this is all talking about the uh, dickens uh, theme dickens task is to write in such a way that the reader feel that some issue larger than that of the corrupt lawyer and local london court is at stake that they can succeed in making us feel rather than merely reason out of ultimate theme the destructive have having heaviness of the dead hand is provided by the fact that bleak house is still a living book about one point here reader need to be perfectly clear though progressive minded in the various ways dickens is no past hinting a, a revolutionary or a social leveler in attacking the dead hands of the past dickens is by no means rejecting all the past all the british of the western tradition we have to remember that dickens has plenty of tradition constructive bones in his body he rejoices in many aspects of tradition and that past living and at the same time mod- uh, modified into the present and uh, he understood the necessity of legal courts and institutions he supported established religion he celebrated the british monarchy the delighted in british tradition of cheerful politeness and many other inherited features of britain the end continental civilization what if despise and rejects in bleak houses drop dross of past institutionalized selfishness and coldness that survived within the tradition so please read and listen carefully subscribe the channel dr anjugrava for more updates
if you are subscribing i would be encouraged to do more so please like share and subscribe thank you so much and write good comments and write your beautiful name also in the comment box <coughs>